what is good warrior family welcome back to the channel if you guys are new you know what to do hit the subscribe button I don't have to repeat myself every video but actually I do because a lot of you just aren't pressing it and if you're not subscribed you're missing out man so I'm giving you free flavor free sauce free information free education free entertainment I hope you know I hope I'm a little entertaining at least but uh, we've got a blank body ready to be painted and I'm excited because I'm always excited to paint all right because inevitably I come up with something new I'll be in here freestyling it and just getting creative with these blanks and ending up with really amazing finished products I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the ones that I've created in the past four days or so so you have an idea of where my brain is at what color schemes I've been working with because I'll kind of go in phases and I'll go through like one color scheme for a week then I'll switch it up and it gets interesting and sometimes I do things that I just can't duplicate so they're one of a kind and that is really cool let's check those baits out guys as you can tell by those two sets of crankbaits they differed pretty greatly in terms of their design their uh, the color schemes I had in mind the first set was more of a natural translucent type deal uh, on those wiggle warp bodies I just got into a thing last week where I was on a tear I was just painting bait after bait after bait and some of them were really colorful with some intricate dot work as you guys could see by that little display but um, some of them were just plain translucent schemes that mimic shad or other kind of bait fish or whatever. I mean, for the most part, I try not to deviate off of the imitate natural forage path, but I do go well off that beaten path and do some crazy art at time. So you guys definitely noticed in that second set, that was more of an abstract set. So I don't adhere to any rules when I paint. I don't always paint natural patterns. I don't always paint abstract patterns. I paint whatever comes to mind and anything I paint, well not everything I paint, but mo like 99% of what I paint I have confidence will catch a fish because I believe cranking is all about your mentality. So that's just a little side note before we start painting and give you an idea where my head is at. And today we're gonna go into a translucent scheme that I find catches fish in a wide variety of water from clear to stained. It's not gonna be super effective in dark, dirty water because it is a semi-translucent scheme. So opaque shows up a little bit better, darker opaque colors I find does a lot better in those muddy conditions. But this bait and all other clarity of water is gonna kill it. And I've had great success on this color, so I'm glad I'll be able to show you guys how to paint this so you can do it yourself. And uh, you can also get in touch with me and I'll paint one for you. So let's get started, enough talking, first step. All right, let's get scooted in. Let's start this project here. I was gonna go for a medium diver blank, but I decided to go back to the wiggle wart. I've been painting them so much lately. I've got, you know, I just got the touch for them. I'm feeling them right now. And uh, I think we're gonna come out with something really pretty today. And there it is, the wiggle wart, the infamous. First step is gonna be a base coat of pearl white. Now pearl white is a great color I've found for translucent schemes. It gets it started really well because it pops that blank out. It makes that blank really pop. It goes from this dull sort of sanded look, you know, this must have caught, it came from the factory looking like that, so it's pre-prepped, meaning it was sanded or buffed or something to prepare the bait. It has no rough spots or anything, but it's cloudy. Uh, usually I'll have to use a very fine sanding block and do that myself. I don't with this bait, top quality stuff. So we're able to just paint right onto it and we're gonna go with that pearl white to start. All right, so we've got the pearl white in the gun and we're gonna make this video quick, simple, concise, Try not to talk too much. All right, white pearls in there, be very generous with it. Super generous, baby. Oh yeah. Dump the whole can on it. All right, heat set that. Now I haven't really talked to you guys today about what we're gonna do. So what color exactly are we gonna do? All right, we're sticking with the translucent department, but Hmm, there's many categories in the translucent department. I say we're gonna go for my take on Ghost Shad, which you'll find reproduced by a ton of different companies. Um, it's a translucent color that I found first on Lucky Craft Baits way back in the day. 
And I really took to this color because it's super effective in clear water and that's all I really fish. So I needed a color that was really gonna be able to crank them out day in, day out on those clear bodies of water and Ghost Shad really does the job. Uh, my version of it, I call it UFO. So let's get into it. All right, next we've got the pearl blue right along the shoulders of this bait. This is only the second step, all right? All right, I got that situated. We're gonna spray this pearl blue right down the shoulders. Make a few passes, make it somewhat heavy, and then do the same on the other side. Just try to make sure you're spraying at the same angle so it gets onto the bait the same way. And then heat set, heat set that pearl because it's, a, it's got more moisture to it, nine times out of 10. That's about it for that step. We've got it coated pretty good with that pearl blue. Always heat set. All right, next up guys, we're gonna be using another test doors paint. This one is a fluorescent hot magenta. So essentially a fluorescent pink. This is hard to work with, so you gotta, you gotta have a, a little bit of practice or you're gonna have to be really familiar with this, the way, the consistency of this paint because I have messed up a few times and it's not fun, man. And we're just gonna do a nice strip underneath the blue. We just want a very light accent there. So we're gonna go just a little bit heavier than that. All right, do the same thing on the other side. Now, the mark of success is when you have it equal when you look at it from underneath. So we're a little bit low here, a little high here, so we're just gonna even them out. Yeah, it looks very nice. All right, now the next step is gonna be a pearl green along the back. I usually put my lighter colors first and then I'll overlay with the darker ones because if you mess up with dark first it's hard to go back all right greens in there spraying well as it always does and we're gonna go right down from the nose to the tail go nice and generous on the green because that's what's gonna fill in the gap in the back there now this is just a more vibrant version of a ghost shad. Ghost shad usually doesn't have that bright uh, pink. It has more of a subtle pink, but I like to go all out, so why not? It gets noticed and it's still finesse in that clear water. You'll see here at the end, once it all comes together, remember it's a translucent body, so light will pass through that. We're almost to the final steps here. We've got gold in there, pearl gold, and we're just gonna overlap the pearl green we just did on the back. We're gonna go heavy on the muzzle and on the tail. My aim is to really cover the center of the back, but not go too much over the green. So we can still see the green popping out on both sides, but that gold definitely covers the back cap. Make sure you're consistent. Once you've cleaned that gun from the gold, get yourself some black, some opaque black. Again, make sure this color is spraying correctly always. All right, and now we're just gonna do the eyes. The eyes are gonna be black. And just go pretty generous around that. And that really makes everything come together nicely. I love that feature. Same thing on the other side, be even. All right, make sure they're nice and symmetrical. And you can black out the muzzle more if you want, but that's all I really like to do to it. And then the next step is gonna be a black splatter down the back. You can test this splatter on the glove. 
It's coming out perfectly, so let's start. Oh yeah. Can be somewhat generous with the splatter on the back. I mean, don't overburden it. You guys make the call on that one. I feel like that's enough. And then heat set that right away so you don't smear it. All right, last option on this bait, you have the option to do a silver belly or not. And you can add some black splatter to that silver belly. Um, I call that my platinum UFO. It's just another variation I do. Now, just to extend this video a little bit and give you guys another look at this bait, I will do that version of the bait. But for now, I just wanna show you guys and give you a recap of what this UFO color is all about because this is a standard color that I paint pretty often. And I'm sure if you guys like this, I'll be getting a few orders of it. So let's explain what exactly it is so you have a summary. The base is a white pearl. Test doors, all of this is test doors. Base white pearl, then we did pearl blue shoulders all the way down the body. Then we did a fluorescent hot magenta down underneath that blue pearl on the underbelly area. Then we did a pearl green over the back. Then we did a pearl gold over that pearl green. Then we took an opaque black and we did the eyes and splatter on the back. All right, now if you guys are gonna stick around, props to you. All right, so the pearl silver's in there. We're gonna apply that right down the center of the belly. Now, if you guys find that you're fishing a little bit more stained water more often and uh, you don't like the looks of this translucent UFO color or ghost shad color, this is a perfect option for making this bait suitable in those darker waters. That pearl silver really makes it more of an opaque effect, more of a chrome type effect. So when the sun or any kind of light comes off of this bait, even in that darker water, you're gonna elicit a response from these fish. You'd be very surprised. They have great skill in being able to find bait in all kinds of water conditions. So I want you guys to get this notion that translucent baits can't be used in stained water or you know, semi-dirty. I want you to get that notion out of your head because what do they have to do in nature when it rains or whatever, the, the water gets dirty, they still have to find minnows you know, the size of a freaking this big and they're translucent beings. So these bait fish are hard to find, hard to catch, and the fish still do it. So you think they're gonna have any trouble finding something like this even though it's translucent? I don't think so. All right, so we've got that silver on the belly, right? And the last, the final step is an opaque black splatter on that just to make it look a little bit more natural and tie it all together. Last step coming right up, folks. It's been a pleasure hanging with you all today. Tried to make this somewhat quick. Now this is a very simple final step. Just get your pressure set correctly on that and splatter it lightly. Don't go too hard with it. You get a more fine spray. And just like that, boys and girls, we're finished. This has been UFO.